Welcome to China Manufacturing Decoded from Sofeast, the podcast where we take you through some of the major topics facing importers and manufacturers in China today. Hello, listener. Thanks for joining us for episode thirty of the podcast. I'm Adrian from Sofeast, and I'm going to be joined by our CEO Renaud Angerin. And today we're discussing everything about quality control plans. There are three types of quality control plan that we're going to go into detail about here. The product quality control plan, which is included in your contract with your supplier, the process control plan, and also the QC plan for new products which are being brought to the market, which clarify exactly what's required before production begins. Let's get going with the episode. Hi, Rono. Thanks for catching up with me. How are you doing? Hey, not bad, not bad. Today's topic is quality control plans. So, what are these? And why are they required before production starts? Well, <laughs> any manufacturer and any buyer needs to have a plan for you know what actually is quality, how to ensure quality, um, what to do if some issues are found, and so on. At least at a basic level. I mean, if you go to the to to Alibaba and you you buy, I don't know. Ping pong balls,、uh, mm. you know, and it's really a small quantity, and they're gonna send it to you by the HR, and you know,、uh, it's 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 just going to be, you know, okay. I I have to clarify what color it is, what diameter,、um, and how it's going to be packed to make sure it's protected, and and you know, do you need to go much further? I don't know, you know, does it? If I drop it from one meter high on a ping pong table that's made in this and that. Then it has to bounce back by at least that much. You probably don't need to go much deeper than that.、Mm. However, if you buy more complicated products in large quantity, if it's a lot of money, you really want to go much more in depth. And same thing as a manufacturer. I mean, this is really、uh, two sides of the, of the same coin. I mean, as a manufacturer, you, you're if you're a serious manufacturer, you want to make sure that. You confirm with your your customers, you know what exactly is it that 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 um、uh, that you want,、uh, what do you accept, what do you not accept, just to avoid having surprises later on, right? And also, as a manufacturer, you want to confirm, you know, okay, yes, we can get to that point, to that desired result, and here's our plan of how we'll get there and how we'll. Double check and ensure that we are getting there, right? I mean, it's that, that's a whole program, but that's that's the the, the the quality control plan, basically. I heard that there are actually more than one type of QC plan, but they all kind of fit together, right? Well, <laughs> different people use these words in different contexts, let's say,、mm. and with different purposes. So. When I wrote an article about that a few years ago,、mm-hmm. later I added a second kind of, of QC plan, and then later yet another kind of QC plan. So, really, those that I, I, I hear most often are usually one of these three. And there's so number one is sort of basic and more more about the the legalities of it, you know. So. You say okay. The buyer has the right to、uh, send inspectors during production, after production. Da 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 da. They need to have access to the production facilities. They, they need to be able to use some of the testing equipment there.、Uh, what happens if there is an issue? If it's failed,、uh, what what exactly are? For example, if it's going to be acceptance testing based on AQR tables,、um, what are the AQR limits?、Um, you know. You 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 want to define all of this, and same thing for testing.、Um, there might be some testing done in the in the facility, maybe by the manufacturer. Maybe the manufacturer has to send some samples for outside testing, maybe in a nominated lab or maybe a a lab that's pre-approved by the buyer,、uh, and and they pay for it, and you know the the, the results are shared with the with the customer, or maybe. Uh, the customer themselves will maybe、uh, during inspection, maybe during production, will 
ask their uh, representative to, to, to pick some samples and send them to, to lab for testing. Uh, and, and, and again, you know, what, what, what exactly is required? Maybe it's, you know, straightforward compliance testing. Hey, this is gonna be Prop 65 and reach and, you know, and, and, and you have to comply with these, I mean, period, right? Uh, or it might be a bit more, more, more elaborate, but um, again, you know, who's going to pay for the testing? What kind of testing? Where? And what happens if it fails? <laughs> right. So, and what about pre-production versus production? So, that, I mean, there's a lot of things here, and it's good to define it clearly. What if there is a case of uh, epidemic failure with with a very high proportion of the facts? You know, what if it's um, noticed, detected after shipment, you know, when it arrives, for example, the buyer is, is, is in Australia and they receive it and then they say, well, this is not acceptable, right? So what happens then, you know, where, what, what is the manufacturer on the hook for? So all of this usually is woven together into a manufacturing contract uh, by, mm. by, by a lawyer, right? But some, I mean, a lot of small buyers don't feel the need to work with the lawyer and to have all, you know, to, to have these, these, these types of, um, of contracts. But at least they say, okay, what's really important for me is this, it's quality. And then they will, they will sort of draft something on a business level. Again, it might not be enforceable. It might, that's not great, but it's better than nothing still. Uh, and then once you have that, you improve it over time. And then when you really want to get serious, you have maybe a big purchase. Um, then you work with the lawyer and they, they can work on the basis of, of, of that information, right? So uh, number one is, is really sort of what you would expect in, in, a, in a legal agreement. The buyer is authorized to do this and here's the plan and here's who will pay for that and here's what happens if there are issues. The second one is actually a, uh, what they call a, a core tool of IATF 16949 which is the equivalent of ISO 9001 for the automotive industry, uh, especially for North America. Uh, also, most European car makers you, you, you use it. So, the, so usually people just call it control plan. Actually, it's a process control plan. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, 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 it's all about quality. It's all about how to ensure quality through process controls. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's sort of a, a standard template. You know, if you search for a control plan online, you, you can find some. I, I guess we can send a link to, to, the, to, to an example that we have in, in the show notes. Yeah, yeah well done. Um, and basically you look at the processes and if you have a, an assembly plant and they purchase the, um, maybe some, uh, some die cast parts from a metal supplier, and then it's sent to some kind of surface treatment, maybe plating, and then it goes into assembly, and then some other critical components. You, first, you're gonna do it for, maybe for assembly, but then later on, you also want to include uh, at least the critical processes, right? The, the most important facilities were, for example, the die casting or the, the production of batteries and, and so on. Right, so you have the list of process steps and for each process step, you try to plan, you have to plan, you know, what exactly is expected at this step. How can we check it during the manufacturing process? If not, how can we check it right after that manufacturing process? And so you, you, you document all this all throughout, right? Uh, the, the, the different process steps. And then you have a plan that, that shows you, you know, if something goes wrong here, it's gonna be cut right away or, you know, right after, right? And you need to make sure that the manufacturer and their own suppliers will translate that into work instructions for the workers, for the, for the, for the production operators, for the maintenance operators, for the, um, the inspection and testing uh, staff, so that they, they really 
know exactly how to do it and they really do it and they record something about it then you can go and check if they actually do it right mm. so again you don't you, you you're not even going to think about that if you if you buy 1,000 pieces of ping pong balls. No. Um, this, however, if you start to place relatively large orders and um, on on custom products or custom parts, there's a lot of money at stake, and you take quality very seriously. That's something you want to go to, and if you really place large orders, then, you know, you, you have to work with suppliers that already have this kind of tools in place, this kind of planning and, and the, the discipline of actually following all of that plan with, with, you know, again, manufacturing and maintenance and quality people actually doing the work of checking regularly. If you go and work with these people and they adapt their system to your product, going to be so much safer for you right mm. so um it's all about process controls right it's a plan on how to control quality through controlling the processes uh, because if you just wait until the end um the end of production the end of you know any one of these manufacturing steps and and, and you check where well, it's it's kind of too late because mm. you find problems maybe an entire batch has been made and what are you going to do? You know, if one of them have all of these issues. So that's process controls, right? Process right. Control and, and this also spans as far back as the incoming components as well, right? Uh, yes, and further. So as I said, if um, maybe you work with an assembly firm and uh, an assembly company, maybe they do, I don't know, some plastic and silicon um, injection molding. Yeah, but they have to buy some some metal parts from there and some um, PCBAs from there and so on. And you identify these as critical components. Then once they have put in place this kind of process control plan in their facility, you can work with them also mm. to, to have it done uh, in the upstream suppliers. Now, if some of these upstream suppliers are very large or, uh, or maybe are not at the kind of, at the level of care and concern over quality as, as, as you are, but that, you know, that's gonna be an issue, it's not gonna work. So mm -hmm. if you really want, want it all, all throughout, and you want to have a view of how quality is safeguarded all throughout your, um, your supply chain, well, you, you, you have to negotiate this from the start. And in China, even if you negotiate from the start after a while, they might just say, ah, no, actually we're not doing it. So uh, you need to pick your, your partners and, and sub-suppliers very carefully. Mm. And when you mentioned trying to find suppliers who are capable of following this sort of process and actually doing the planning to put in, in place such a process control plan, I guess then to do that, you would do process audits, right? Well, if you really want to make sure, yes. Mm. But there are probably shortcuts. I mean, you can... Simply ask them, hey, you know, do you do some process FMEAs and, and control plans sometimes? You you can, um, I don't know, ask for an example where you remove some of the confidential information. You mm. can you can ask some some questions around that, and then usually you will feel, you know, you 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 can already eliminate a lot of the candidates based on that. Actually. But again, this is not going to happen if you're placing $10,000 POs, right? This is for quite serious buyers, but I mean, generally at least a million dollars in annual buy. Mm. Um, it, it, I'm not saying it's impossible under that, but it gets more and more difficult as the volumes are, you know, get lower and lower, yeah. Right, okay. You mentioned there's a third type of plan? Right, so, Again, the first one is more or less the, the, the legal approach and like planning for who has to do what and so on, sort of committing, you know, the parties committing on, on what they would do, at least on the inspection and testing side. Then there's the process control plan to really plan how to safeguard quality all along and, 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 and so on. 
rather than waiting until the end of production, basically, and finding that there are issues. Number sure. three is if you develop a new a new product, there's really some questions that you need to clarify. And a good manufacturer would ask, actually try to pull that information out of you. But if the supplier's communication is not great, the supplier is not very organized, they don't, they don't try hard to, um, to, to, to do this in a systematic manner. Maybe they don't develop new products regularly, so they, they don't have a system for that. They don't, they don't have mm. a good process. Well, um, there's a few things that are really important. And at, <clears throat> at a basic level, basically, there's, um, there's three categories of information in there. Uh, first, about, I would put together a quality, reliability, compliance. So some of the questions would be, you know, what is the quality standard? Is it clear? Is it documented? Um, is it sufficient? Does it cover all the, you know, most of the, the, the common issues that, that can pop up? Um, does it make clear what is acceptable, not acceptable? I mean, it's shocking how many buyers do not have a clear quality standard, right? They always kind of feel the manufacturer should do it, but, you know, the manufacturer manufactures to the standard uh, and uh, they very often they are not specialists in how to uh, how to develop and document the quality standard for, mm. for, for their products for the products they make which might be the products from the customer right and who I mean who is better positioned than the the, 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 the customer to say this is the quality standard I mean the manufacturer exactly. doesn't know where it's going to be sold how it's going to be used and, and what you know what what the distribution channel can can accept or not and so on Another key question is about the, the golden samples, the, the, you know, the approved prototypes, whatever you call it, uh, you know, where, where is it? At what stage, you know? Okay, we make one uh, before opening the tooling, then with the tooling, we make a new one and so on. Okay, um, really, really important to have that. Another one is about the, um, the testing stations, the testing jigs and, and, and fixtures. If you just say, yeah, yeah, okay, you, you make this, right? You can just make it. Yeah, 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 no problem, we make it. <laughs> but for some of the operations, it's kind of tricky to, to maybe to assemble things together and, and, and so on. And, um, and then how, how is it going to be tested? Uh, oh yeah, we're just gonna take the caliper and check, you know, or check the alignment or whatever. Yeah check with the approved sample. No, no, no. In many cases, it doesn't fly. Well, I mean, obviously for electronic products, you, you, how are you going to even check, do at least a functional check on the PCB, right? Um, so that you, you need some, some testing stations. And as the buyer, you have to push the manufacturer to, 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 to develop that or you develop it yourself and to make sure that they have it in place and they confirm that it works fine. Otherwise, I mean, um, it's really one of these basic things that just has to be in place, right? Or at least there should be a plan to, to get one in place as soon as possible. Another one is about the intended use for the product and um, how, would, how it will be um, used by the, the users and in what environment and for how long and so on. So this is more related to reliability. And then also, when it comes to compliance, where is the product going to be sold? What are the applica applicable certifications? What is the mandatory uh, testing, or at least the, what, what is mandatory? Uh, it might not be through testing, but at least what what does the buyer have to ensure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all of this together is really about the sort of the requirements, if you want. Uh, then. You look at the, the manufacturing and I usually cut it into two. You have the manufacturing of the components and then you have the assembly. So uh, the manufacturing of the components, again, which are the critical components? Do you have access to the bill of material or a part of it? Uh, and how to check that? That's uh, usually an interesting question. 
you know, are there any special requirements on the components? So that this could be anything. This could, could be really very, uh, very wide. Um, and then the, the assembly, so I, I kind of cut it, you know, the, let's say the manufacturing in the final supplier, right? the direct supplier, uh, because usually you have more power over them. You have, you know, they, they, they listen to you much better. So, um, you know, what, what's the tooling? Where is it going to be made? How do you control it? Or how should the buyer maybe control it? How are things going to be assembled? Uh, you know, who's going to develop the work instructions for that uh, and train the workers? Because it's it's not just about having the tooling and the fixtures and things like that. It's also about having people who know how to make it, right? If it's a relatively large batch, production batch, then how, you know, are some of the lines going to be dedicated to this product? You know, they're gonna be set up and optimized in a way that makes it much easier to, uh, to, to, to make production there in a more productive manner, right? So, um, yeah, and, and, and if it's, I mean, the first time that the, there is a mass production on this specific new product, what about the pre-production approvals, right? So a pilot run uh, comes to mind, that's, that's often really a, a must. Mm. Otherwise, uh, all kinds of issues might pop up in, in, in production and that can be extremely costly, including in time. What, you know, what, what kind of confirmations uh, will, will be done on that? There might be some specific reliability testing and compliance testing. There might be other things, but it's really important to, uh, to, to think about it. So this is sort of forcing the buyer and the manufacturer to think through their, uh, basically the new product introduction process mm. uh, without really going deep into that, but it's, um, it, it forces them to, um, at least at, at a relatively superficial level <laughs> to, uh, to go through that, right? So um, it's, it's basically forcing people, this number three is, is forcing all the parties to think hard uh, when there is a, a new product involved. Because new product always comes with extra risks and you, you don't want to assume anything. And there is often a lot of work that needs to be done specifically for that product. Sometimes the Chinese uh, manufacturers, you know how enthusiastic and optimistic they, they, they can be. Um, Absolutely. They, 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 they can disregard it and say, yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. We know how to make these products and da, da, da. You know, it's, um, it's a new kind of coffee machine with a new kind of filtering, whatever. Yeah, but it's mm. fine. You know, we've been making coffee machines for 20 years. Like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get going and then we'll fix the problems as they come up, which is mm. sort of the way they think. It's kind of part of the, the, the Chinese culture of being extremely flexible. They don't try to nail your your calendar is three weeks in advance to set the meeting, right? They, uh, they, um, they, they, they see time as, and, and, and plans in general as very flexible. So their approach is always, let's try and let's see what works, what doesn't work, and we'll just adjust. But we don't need to worry too much about that right now. So that's the general Chinese approach. Um, and it can be a killer <laughs> for, for a, new, a new product that's, particularly new and complex, right? It's, it's totally a killer. So that's, yeah, that, that was number three of the, um, the three kinds of quality mm. control plans. Uh, yeah, that's a good, that, that's a good one. Uh, I, I think getting everything in black and white, because you've spoken before about transparency, it's so important for mm. the buyer to make very, very clear what's expected, but also to have that feedback from the manufacturer themselves as well do they understand the quality standard it's, it's a yes or no answer isn't it really <laughs> do they understand the quality standard yeah and you know is the quality standard actually clear and, mm. and 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 useful and i mean people say always say it cannot be exhaustive but you know has there been at least some effort into covering mm. some of the known and, and relatively common 
failure modes, the, 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 you know, kinds of defects, and kinds of different kinds of issues. Um, right. It seems amazing that people would go into working with a supplier in China or other Asian countries, of course, and not actually go through this process. I mean, some people do, and some people are really very careful, and they'd better, you know, they'd rather wait for six months or one year, delay their project to make sure everything is fine. Mm -hmm. And and these ones sometimes drive the Chinese factories crazy. <laughs> so it's better if they do it before engaging a manufacturer or maybe at the same time, but with other resources. But yes, a lot of companies just jump in because you see the Chinese manufacturers who say, yeah, 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 sure. Hey, no problem, we can do it. So why worry, right? I mean, if you, if your specialty is, let's say, marketing your products for distribution on on, on Amazon or on, on your website or or um, or selling your products to to some large companies, whatever you you usually you are a specialist of your product, okay, mm -hmm. but really about your your customers and your market. And so, if you go to a manufacturer who's supposed to be the specialist in manufacturing, and they say, ha ha ha, you know, yes, yes, yes no problem. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, then you say, well, you know, they know what they're doing. They, they make this kind of product, so I'm, I'm fine. I'm safe, right? So why, mm. why worry? <laughs> and, and that's, I mean, that, that's why I've been writing about this for years and years. Be careful, <laughs> exactly. actually, as, as the buyer, this is your job. You mm. have to define what the requirements are, what the next steps are, and so on. You can't just rely on the manufacturer because the manufacturer's job in China is not to make sure that you have, you know, defined the quality standard and everything. They're not going to right. do it for you. It's not in their interest. I mean, the way they see it mm. is if I define it in a specific manner, then they can nail me. They mm. can get down on me if I don't respect it. However, if it's all kind of gray and you know, it's nothing is black or white and nothing is really documented and there's no clear trail that they can search to, to nail me then i'm fine i can always get out of it and you know, i can weasel out of it so uh, as the buyer really this is not your interest mm. okay and at the top of the episode you mentioned that when buying maybe simpler products so your example were ping pong balls the way that you would behave when looking at the QC, the final QC planning for such a product is maybe different for more involved products. So, I mean, the three sort of QC plans that you've mentioned, the second one, the process control plan, this you've mentioned is perhaps more relevant for very large orders, large buyers, but are all three, I mean, are they appropriate for every type of product and buyer in general, other than other than the order size or are there other factors um, at play? Not, I would say number one is appropriate for all kinds of buyers because they all right. get into a transaction and they all, they should all clarify some terms around quality, okay? Hmm. Number two is, is for high quality requirements and high to very high quantities. Uh, so <clears throat> if you buy um, cheap promotional products, even if you buy for, for $10 million of it, you, you know, forget it because this is sort of a one shoot, one shot sort of purchase, I guess. And, and it's very cheap products. And, and if you have 5% of defectives, as long as you get a great price, does it really matter, right? And as long mm. as they're on time. <laughs> Quality is not the most important uh, in general. So in that case, you probably, you know, you know you're not gonna go through a control plan. Um, conversely, if you develop your, your new product with a manufacturer and you really, really don't want them to, to get quality wrong, uh, it's, a, it's really not, not a big investment to develop this kind of plan. Uh, so even if you, you, you start very low and and you go up to, um, you know, you place purchase order of 20,000 and 50,000 and 100,000 and 200,000, 
is fine. I mean, you, you should think of that, right? At least for the critical process steps, because this is really about risk management. So you don't need to cover everything. You can just cover the you know, what's really critical, right? Uh, at least you start with that. And then over time, you can add to it and add to it and add to it. And number number three is about new products. Uh, if you mm-hmm. if you just pick an existing product and you're okay with it, and again, quality is not that important, then this is not the most important thing that that, that you want to get right. Having said that, again, if you don't even have a quality standard, uh, <laughs> this is just this is really not good. I mean, you you're asking for trouble. So mm. if you place a, a peel for $2,000, it might not be worth it, but at least you want an approved sample and a few key points and that might be okay. If you place a peel for $200,000, you absolutely have to have a clear quality standard about oh, what yeah. is expected and how to check it and, and what the most common kinds of defects would be and how they would be categorized. Mm, okay. And just to wrap up, you did mention buyers of products which aren't new. So maybe off the shelf products, which they're just going to have rebranded, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, um, right. Yeah, private labeling about, of existing products. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so how about these guys? What what would they be focusing on? The first one that I mentioned about the, 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 the important terms. Yeah. And basically they are the distributor, right? So they um yeah they want they should really try to define the quality standard and the 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 basic terms around what happens with inspection and testing and what is required of the manufacturer what the customer has the right to do and what happens when some issues pop up this is really the basics of, of of what they need to document i would say at the beginning then as they see more and more issues, then they keep documenting that into their quality standard. I mean, mm. photos of defects are always very good for clarifying things and for calling the inspector's attention to the right things. Mm. And for uh, maybe also, um, how to say, uh, challenging the manufacturer on maybe some of their manufacturing steps or maybe on the design or, right? could be on a number of things. So over time you grow your, your quality standard, you make it better and better and better, more into the details. And as long as you're just a distributor, you probably don't have much of a say about their process for manufacturing or their process for developing new products. So right. usually it stops there. I see, good. So we've covered buyers off shelf products, we've covered people who are developing new products and you've gone through the three different kinds of QC plans. So that gives a really well-rounded understanding of quality control plans to the listener. So thanks, thanks for letting me pick your brain on that. All right. Thanks. It was a good one. And to everybody tuning in and listening, good to have you with us. We will see you next week. Thanks for joining us. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, don't forget to like and share, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other places that you get your podcasts from. See you next time.